The Joint Committee on Taxation um, and the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget released an analysis on the Republican Obamacare replacement. And I think they figured out why Paul Ryan and Donald Trump are pushing it. So listen to this, man. This is unreal. It contains $600 billion in tax cuts, tax cuts that would save the wealthiest 0.1% of Americans $200,000 each in a single year. Wow. I have to admit, in my first reading of the facts of this new um, Obamacare replacement bill, the other articles I saw didn't touch this, didn't mention it. But now as I read this, I go, oh, this is the main thing behind it. This is why they're pushing it. So there are other horrific parts. Millions of people would lose insurance. I mean, they basically take an axe to the Medicaid expansion, which is horrendous. So it's a bad bill either way, but now we know $600 billion in tax cuts for the rich. Save the wealthiest 0.1% of Americans about nearly $200,000 each every year. So let me give you the, the specific breakdown of it here. You end up with $594 billion in tax cuts. And again, those tax cuts overwhelmingly go to the rich to the point where the 0.1% of Americans at the very, very top save about $200,000 each every year. And that, that the effect of that is you're not giving people who are covered by the Medicaid expansion uh, health care, health insurance anymore. So they don't have it anymore. You know, the, with the Medicaid expansion, say what you want about Obamacare, and I say a lot about it that I don't like. Probably the best part of it was the Medicaid expansion because it covers way more people under Medicaid. Um, and... If you get rid of that, you're basically taking lower class people or lower middle class people and you're saying, yeah, now we're going to make it so you can't afford health care again. And they're shifting all that money and all those resources back to the top 0.1% with basically $600 billion in tax cuts. So everybody should be disgusted by this. And remember, just bottom line, this, this isn't a matter of debate or... or opinion as to whether or not he's looking out for the little guy here. Factually speaking, he's snubbing the little guy and helping out the rich. That's just a fact. When you look at the resources and where they're diverted and how it works out at the end of the day, you're snubbing people who need the help to give it to people who don't need it. So this is probably the biggest reason why they're pushing this bill, because there's a lot of aspects of the bill that other Republicans uh, don't like. And, you know, some goofy Republicans are calling it Obamacare light. And uh, they're, they're coming out against it, but they're coming out against it because they don't think it's punitive enough on the poor and they don't think it helps the rich enough. So this is in many ways what we're seeing right now with this is um, similar to the grand bargain debate under Obama. Do you remember that? What happened with that is there were Tea Party Republicans who said, no, we're... We don't want to agree to the Social Security and Medicare cuts that Obama and the Democrats proposed because we want more cuts. So we're going to reject some cuts to earned benefit programs because we want more cuts. So the whole fucking thing exploded and we got no cuts because they were so obstinate. It looks like the same thing is happening here. So the, the Trump care bill or the Ryan care bill, whatever you want to call it, this new uh, health care bill, um... It might not pass, and we might still have Obamacare in place because the Republicans, so many Republicans who are even further right, say, no, I want more. So they, they might fail on this front, and we might keep Obamacare in place. But Trump actually said that if this doesn't go through, he says, I will let Obamacare fail and then blame it on the Democrats in the next election. There's, a, there's so many things wrong with that, so... First of all, that he's just admitting, I will play politics with the health of the American people. And if it fails and it affects people's lives in a negative way, well, that's fine because I get to play politics with it and then win the next election. So in other words, I don't care about the American people first and foremost. I care about getting reelected and I care about playing politics. So he's admitting that. But the second thing is, uh, you say you're going to let it fail. So what exactly does that mean? Would you pass provisions here and there that are, you know, a knife in the side of it to try to, to try to kill it faster or would you just leave it as is 
because if you leave it as is, I mean, Obamacare does need many changes, and the health insurance companies are kind of revolting against it. What's Aetna, because they wanted to merge with Humana, said, oh, we're going to pull out of Obamacare, but don't worry, it's not because of that. It was because of that. They were mad that they didn't get a merger approved. So I don't know, it might collapse under its own weight because it was untenable with leaving the health insurance companies in control to begin with. Or it might actually stay relatively stable as it is right now, which means you still have rising health care uh, and health insurance costs, but maybe not as much as it would be if you didn't have it. And maybe keeping Obamacare as is, is still better. In fact, it probably would be way better than this shitty bill if it were to go into place. So I don't know what Trump means when he says, I'll just let it fail and then blame the Democrats. Are you going to, like, help it along to let it fail and fucking, you know, do little provisions here and there, sneak it into law that would really stab it and kill it? Or are you just going to leave it as is and then whatever happens, happens? I don't know. I don't know. But either way... There is no good answer now, and there's a lot of anger to be directed at the Democrats because they had a supermajority for Obamacare, and they didn't even push for single payer, and which is the supposedly the liberal idea, the Demo the progressive idea, what the Democrats should have been for, and they didn't even really push for a public option. You know, Obama's uh, stuck on that for not even a week, and he's like, okay, I cave, and I'll do your idea. I'll do Romney care slash Nixon care slash Dole care. I mean. Obamacare was originally a right-wing think tank plan, the, the individual mandate system. So the, if the Democrats just did single payer at the beginning, or even a public option, we wouldn't be in this position right now. So we're caught between a rock and a hard place. We're caught between a shitty reform, Obamacare, and a shittier reform, this right here, Trump care, Ryan care. So it's just so sad that our spectrum, the Overton window in the U.S. has now shifted so far to the right that other modern nations laugh at us, man. I mean, really, we're, we're using as a political football healthcare for the American people. That is a sick, sick nation right there.